Hey, what's going on, guys? I just picked up um, some of this aluminum black metal finish from Brownells, uh, made by Birchwood Casey. Never used this stuff before, and I just found a good way to try it out. Metal finish, touch up, scratched in moored areas quickly. Um, the directions are back here. It says to clean the parts um, with uh, the Birchwood Casey cleaner degreaser or denatured alcohol. I don't have either of those. So I'm going to try just some acetone. If you can see here, we got um, a little bit of a scratch on this first scope. We're gonna see how this stuff works. I'm sure it works better on um, aluminum that's not coated in a matte finish, a gloss finish. It would probably blend in better like bluing. But let's see how. Let's see how it works. So I'm just gonna take a Q-tip here. Got a Q-tip dabbed in it, and um, I'm just gonna put some on here. It says to give it a minute to work, so we'll see what it does. You can almost see it kind of bubbling, so it's definitely doing some kind of chemical reaction. In the meantime, I'll give you a little update on this rifle. If you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen what I was doing with this, but if not, um, this is a Boyd Spike Camp stock. It uh, had several different issues. But the one was it was too short. Uh, it needed to be about an inch longer length of pool. So I picked up this rubber spacer from Brownells. It was around 30 bucks. I'll put a link in the description for it. Um, but it was just your standard oval spacer. This is uh, the shape of a regular recoil pad. But if you notice with these um, spike camp stocks, they're not your typical oval. They got flats and angles and whatnot. So it was a little fun fitting that, but it turned out pretty good. And the other issue I had with it was, let's flip this over. Boyd's um, inletted this trigger guard too deep. I don't know if you can see here or not. When it was put together before, it was actually squeezing um, the floor plate and denting the wood and not letting it function right. It was actually springing off the wood. So what I had to do was take some Brownells Acre Glass and I actually bedded this trigger guard in so it doesn't go any deeper than sitting flush here and then when you tighten it up it's fine it had um pillar aluminum pillars in it already but that's not really going to help when it's um it's cut too deep so we fixed that let me flip this back around again we fixed that um but then i also had to open up the recoil lug area because it was kind of in the wrong spot. It was really rubbing off the back of it. It wasn't dropping in really nice. So on top of the pillar beds that Boyd's already put in it, I ended up um, glass bedding the recoil lug area. Kind of dark, you can't really see. But I um, mixed up some glass bedding, put the uh, brown dye in it, 
to kind of match the browns in the in the laminate stock. And then I free floated the barrel channel because it was not free floated. Got it all fixed up. And it's good to go now. Before before I did all that, when you'd tighten the screws, the front screw was going up into the action and it's preventing the bolt from closing. So definitely some um quality control issues there with this Boyd stock. I didn't call them, but I'm sure they'd want to make make it right, but to make it right they want you to send it back and sometimes you just don't have time to do that. But <coughs> excuse me guys. Just getting over being sick. But let's get back and see what this looks like. Let's wipe this back off. Oh wow. I'm impressed. Like I said, this is the first time using this. They say to rinse this off with um water, but you're obviously not gonna rinse your scope off. So I'm just gonna, I should have a bottle of water here somewhere. So I'm just gonna wipe it off with a little bit of water and then hit it with some, some ballastol or any kind of oil. Here's the water. Dry it off of the old t-shirt. And then fresh can of Ballastol that I just picked up. It's at Brownells as well. I'll put links to everything that I used in this video. I ended up using more stuff than I expected. Um, I love Ballastol for any kind of... um wipe down um, anything you want to oil, shine up, protect. It's good stuff. So yeah, if you want to do a comparison might have to back up the video to where we started, but it definitely made that scratch black. Um, pretty happy with it. Obviously, it's not going to get rid of the scratch, but it makes it less noticeable now that it's not uh, bright white and it's black again. Essentially, I'm sure you could do the same thing with a Sharpie, but this stuff is um, obviously some kind of a corrosive chemical that uh, blackens it through a chemical reaction, so I'm sure it, I'm gonna hold up a lot better than just dabbing it with a Sharpie. Um, so yeah, I'm anxious to try it more on uh, bigger pieces um, and see how it uh, holds up, but for now, that was a good test of it. Um, I'm impressed, I'm intrigued. Uh, I'll keep you updated if I find any other uses for it, but in the meantime, thanks for watching, guys.